So I'm still here with my, my friend Esther Stanhope, uh, international Hello. speaker and award-winning author. You yes. don't happen to have a, ha a copy of your book handy, do you, Esther? Oh, gosh, funnily enough, I do, Lee. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Got one as well. We're both um, award-winning authors. I was yeah. the um, highly commended author. Um, uh, me too, just a year earlier than you, obviously, Esther. Oh, but, uh, gosh, I'm just, oh, I'm just <laughs> on his coattails, what is it? Yeah, yeah. I've got my, anyway. actually, I've got my award up there. I look at it sometimes when I'm feeling down. <laughs> anyway, we're doing uh, 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 some top tips on, on looking, sounding good, coming across well on, on video. And I think one of the, um, one of the sort of key areas is, is how you start and how you finish, right? I mean, this is always yeah. true in presenting. What's the best way to begin? What's the best way to end? And if I, if I was to sum up my top tip really quickly, it would be start before, before the meeting starts. And what I mean by yes. that is far too many people are pressing, you know, open the meeting or invite everybody or whatever. And then they start doing things like, oh, am I, am I framed correctly in the shot? And can everyone hear me? Um, and I know it's a very simple tip, but basically I would say do all of that stuff 10 minutes before the meeting starts. Um, get all the technical mistakes out of the way so that you're really ready to go. And a second thing uh, I've been doing with lots of clients, and it works really well, is have an initial holding slide in the first two minutes of the meeting. And that might have a provocative statement on it or an interesting quotation or just an agenda for the meeting. But basically, everyone comes in, they know the meeting started, the meeting's running, and yeah. then you start with a bang, right? Rather than all this, can everyone hear me? And, oh, I'm not sure I pressed the right button. Absolutely. Um, do, do you agree with that or do you do things differently? No, absolutely. Look, the, here's the thing. It probably takes four minutes to start a virtual meeting because people are going, and if it's an audio meeting, you might hear something like this. Ding! Jonathan has joined the meeting and it literally just stops you in mid-flow. Ding! Oliver has joined the meeting and then somebody's dropped out. Ding! Olivia has left the meeting and it goes on and <laughs> Olivia's joined, Olivia's left, Jonathan's left. And it goes on and it's, it's, I remember having this horrendous audio um, video com uh, a call it wasn't a video um, that's where a video has the edge over audio by the way the point is at the beginning of a virtual meeting everybody is clicking here clicking there can't hear can't they they you can't hear them they can't hear you they're muted they're not muted you're muted you haven't pressed record etc etc so yes you if you you need to get there early and you need to let your people know that they need to be dialing in early because by the time it's kind of clunked into launching and now, oh, do you need to press um, launch the software again? And you know, there's, there's always a software link or something. So yeah. definitely um, start early. But also, I think it's a really good idea, Lee, to have a couple of minutes of kind of, you know, we're, we're starting in a few minutes. I'll be pressing record in a few minutes. I actually have a kind of press record moment because my background's broadcasting. So I'm like, we're going live. So I quite often do this whole thing like, okay, we're going to be going live in about two minutes. So make sure you've got water, make sure you're, you're ready. And there's there's a there's a holding slide there or some something to to hold people's attention. Also, get your yeah. pens ready. You know, you know, get yourself a drink of water, whatever. You've got time to um, go and grab yourself a drink or something because we're going to be starting. Yeah. And then I kind of do a, a thirty second a countdown, like a minute and a half, a minute, etc. Like a, like a live studio. Another thing okay. that I do is just say hi. You know, where, where are you calling from? If if you want a bit of small talk before you start, before your hard start. Um, you know, wait, just quick, just see how if the chat box is working. Give us a shout out. Who, where are you calling from? Who are you? Where are you calling from? And then you can just you can use a little bit of that chat box. And if you have your glamorous assistant there helping you, which we've talked about in another clip, they can be kind of saying, "Oh, hi," you know, yeah, and, and just saying a few people are still a few people are still joining us now. Yeah. And then, I, I, how do you start, Lee? How do you actually start? After well, the I, I was going to add just a couple of things to that, actually, which um, because, uh, you've reminded me of a couple of things. So, so yeah. one is just in terms of the logistics of starting. I think it's really useful to have precise times rather than starting on the hour and half hour. Um, it's much better to start a meeting at 9.55 or 10.05 um, for a couple of reasons. One is because everyone starts the meetings on the hour. So, so often a lot of online software has a slight connection problem exactly on the hour because everybody in the country is having a meeting at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing is psychologically in people's minds, it makes it a bit more precise. If you've got a meeting that starts at 10.05, that's sort of saying to you psychologically, this is precise. I've thought about this. Right? Right. You, you, can't, you can't turn up two minutes late for this. So it impels people a bit. And then the, the mm. third thing is um, 
I think consistency, you've got to train people. If you're running a lot of online meetings and you're always doing the four or five minute thing of not starting on time, people yeah. get used to that. Whereas yeah. once you've done three meetings in a row where it starts at 10.05 and it starts, people yeah. get trained very, very quickly. I've got to be there on time. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And then in terms of your question, how do you start? I, I think you've, you've got to do something that engages people's attention straight away. And that's, the, you know, presenting theory often called a hook. So that's either a, an interesting statement or, or, or an obvious outlay of what we've got to achieve in the next 20 minutes. Something yeah. that, that basically, uh, particularly online, you've got to, you mustn't let people mentally be in the role of observer. Yeah. Right? They, they've got to mentally take the role of participant immediately. That's, that's how yes. you've got to hook them. Yeah. So actually, when I say, you know, just say, who are you? Where are you calling from today? Are you in Kent? Are you in Kenya? Are you in Dubai or whatever? Actually, that's quite a good, that kind of covers quite a lot of ground because it's giving, giving people, they're getting in the routine of chatting to you. They're getting in the routine of offering who they are, where they're from, and you can start referring to them straight away. So that's actually, it's very, very simple. But in your organization, people are going to be in all parts, parts, different parts of the world, different parts of the country, different parts of London, wherever you are. It's quite interesting just to hear where, where they are. And, yeah. and, and, and you could even say, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing at the moment? Or, um, so, yeah, you're absolutely right to get people participating. Um, so, and then how do you end? So ending, I, that was a very funny text the other day. I mean, obviously, you want to end on an action point. See you next time. The action is, what are we going to do next? In terms of content, absolutely yes. In terms of the actual clicking off the meeting, um, there's a very funny instant Instagram message the other day saying, awkward moment, those last five seconds when you say, okay, so, you know, see you next time. And then you press stop and it doesn't stop. Because yeah. there's always another click. <laughs> Every time you do remote meetings, there's two clicks to do everything. In fact, when we were recording these tips, I didn't press record because it had to, I had to press record twice because it says record. And then it says, do you want to go on the iCloud or the computer? Two clicks. So here's a little tip for you. And now news readers do this. At the end of the news, they go, oh, yes, and good night. And they get their paper and they go, their papers. They don't do what, what I would term as face drop. So the tip there is do not face drop at the end of your meeting. So, cause I've heard some hideous things in the last few weeks while everyone's been working from home. Um, you know, people go, oh no, or swearing. I mean, even when I worked at the BBC, I've heard swearing before the fader went down properly. The key that the tip is don't end straight away and don't face drop, keep smiling. And when, you, when you're gonna end the meeting, so Lee, we are gonna end this tip now, aren't we? Yes, so yes, I'll, see you, I'll see you in the next tip.